Despite being one of the most successful sides in English football history, things haven't quite been up to scratch in the last decade or so for Manchester United. Whether it's been managers that haven't worked out, poor performances on the pitch or mega money transfers that didn't go the way the club planned, things aren't exactly going great for the Manchester side and this season it looks like it's going to be another year without really challenging for that Premier League title. So today we're going to try and fix all that. That's right, we'll be stepping into Eric Ten Hag's job, taking over as Manchester United manager, giving ourselves five years to not only try and win the Premier League yet again, but also challenge on a European basis. Now their squad isn't necessarily as good as some of those teams challenging for the title right now, but they do have some good players. Whatever you think about Bruno Fernandes' antics on the pitch, there's no doubting this man's talent. Despite dipping in and out of four, Marcus Rashford is clearly a very talented player. And Argentinian Lissandro Martinez has been one of the club's best bits of business in the last five years. And there's also some great young talent like Alejandro Garnacho, who looks like he's got a massive future. Danishman Rasmus Hoyland, who took a while to get started into the Premier League, but seems to be settling now. And of course, how can we forget Kobi Mainu, recently capped for England at only the age of 18. From the outside, things look quite rosy. We've got a huge stadium, good facilities, some great players as we've just seen, and financially there is £95 million in the balance. But if we look at the debts and loans, we'll see things aren't so good. There's actually £781 million of debt in there, and that's definitely going to affect the club long term, and it's probably the reason that we're only looking at a £1 million transfer budget for the coming window. What definitely doesn't help us financially is all of these players highlighted are earning more than £100,000 a week, and everyone from Harry Maguire upwards is on 200 grand a week. Included in that heavy paid bracket are Anthony Martial, Harry Maguire, Victor Lindelof, Ericsson, Donny van der Beek as well, and arguably a lot of these players aren't even vital to our best 11. So it's definitely going to be a process at Manchester United. We're going to have to move some of the dead wood on over the next few years, lower the wage bill, which should help us financially while using some of that great youth talent at United to hopefully push up the table. This won't be done in one or two seasons. This is going to take a while. But before we get this rebuild kicked off with our own transfers, if you guys could do me a massive favour, I'd be hugely appreciative if you could do two things. Firstly, scroll down, hit that like button. You can forget you ever did it, but it really gives me a massive boost here on the channel. And subscribe as well if you haven't already. We're pushing close now to 35,000 subscribers, which is the first of a few milestones on our way to 50k. So thank you to anybody who does that. Don't forget as well, you can comment down below your rebuild of choice in the comments and we might get around to doing it. Every rebuild I do is based on your suggestions. This was suggested to me many times and now we're finally doing it. And the last thing is if you want to support me as a creator, there is a Patreon linked in the description of this video over there. Not only can you support me, but in return, you'll get access to all of the save files from every rebuild we've done here on the channel from season one through to five. So you can pick up at any point, carry on with what we've built or try and do a better job than I did. With that being said, let's make some transfers and hopefully start sorting this squad out. Okay, so our first transfer window didn't really have any action whatsoever. Man U have already spent over £150 million this summer and we only had £1 million of budget, so we needed to sell people to bring players in and there wasn't really much interest in our players for the values that I wanted. So we're going to just leave it in Season 1 and then really get stuck into it in Season 2 and onwards. So for our first season, we're not changing too much. I just want to see how this squad does and then start building from there. Tactically, I've built around a 4-3-3 system similar to what Manchester United will be using in real life just with a few roles tweets but the one thing that I am asking is for my assistant manager to play Kobe Mainu as often as possible in this deep lying role behind our midfield he's going to be making us tick and at such a young age we're really banking a lot on him but if he can develop the way that I think he can we could have a superstar at the base of our midfield now speaking of superstars our best 11 is actually full of them if we look at the team that we could assemble with all of our best players we have Onana in goal of course you all know him recently signed by Man United Diego Dallo is at the back alongside Lissandro Martinez and Rafael Varane who doesn't have too long left on his contract it expires this season and on his wages I might be willing to let him go Luke Shaw is at left back and then in midfield we have got Casemiro but that's going to be Kobe Mainu as often as possible Mason Mount Bruno Fernandes our best forward line is supposedly Sancho who's not at the club Rashford and Martial realistically I think that's going to be 
Hoyland, and this squad has a prediction to finish, drum roll, let's see, on the game of fifth place. 16 to 1 odds of winning the title. I would say that is pretty fair. Luke Shaw is supposedly the best left back in the league, so at least that's something. But now we're going to get stuck in, let season one ride out, and then from there, we'll really start making this squad our own. And our first season has been quite similar to real life. Our team never really put up an effort in terms of challenging for a title, but we were clearly good enough to be in a European place, finishing in 7th place with a Conference League position for next season. 61 points was a total, which is obviously nowhere near good enough for a team like Manchester United, nor is the Conference League, but this isn't my squad. We're really going to have to do a lot of work in the upcoming transfer window to start making this team our own, but the league wasn't the only thing we were competing for this season. Because we were also in the Champions league and as you can see we knocked out Feyenoord in the round of 16 and also Lazio in the quarter final. That set up a semi-final against RB Leipzig, a fairly winnable match but we were 3-0 down after the first leg at their stadium and then early on at Old Trafford Leipzig really put us to the sword. In only the sixth minute they went forward and a header from Openda put them 4-0 up in the tie. Now most teams would be dead and buried at this point but of course Manchester United are famous for their comebacks and we tried to do exactly that because in the 21st minute Rashford found the back of the net that made it 4-1 on aggregate on the semi-final night but realistically there was still very little hope until the 43rd minute when Mount found Rashford who was able to tuck away his second of the game it might have been scruffy but it was now 4-2. Now whilst we did get our hopes up a little bit Leipzig weren't going to let us have any real belief because they managed to score straight after half time that made it 5-2 on aggregate with only 30 minutes to play it was game over or at least we thought it was until this poor pass out from the back from Leipzig found Marcus Rashford who managed to tuck the ball away that was his hat trick on the night and now the score was 5-3. In the 73rd minute Ericsson had a corner who found the leaping Rafael Varane he blasted it into the corner of the net now it was 5-4 and then only a few minutes later in the 75th minute Ericsson took the ball a great pass over to Rashford he went through slotted it away it was now 5-4 five and we were heading to penalties and after pretty much everybody had taken their spot kick it fell down to Wambasaka who missed in sudden death so unfortunately despite a valiant effort we went out of the Champions League in the semi-final to Leipzig and it was a similar story in the cups knocked out in the semi-final of the Carabao and the fifth round of the FA Cup against Arsenal so nothing really to shout home too much about but we're now going to be able to start making this team our own transfer wise we've been given a whopping 81 million pounds to spend 100 grand of wage budget but with these contracts expiring including Martial, Varane, Brandon Williams, Heaton and Johnny Evans we're going to have over 500 grand worth of wage budget extra be added on to that for next season so there's going to be a lot of work to be done in the transfer market fingers crossed we can make some good signings. So the season two transfer window was a hectic one. Alongside releasing all of those players previously mentioned, we sold on even more players. Hannibal has left us to join Lille in the French divisions for a small fee of two million, but his loan to Sevilla was terrible. He's not a player that I really think is any good at all anyway. Yes, he might have been worth a little bit more, but I just wanted him off the book so he could make some cash. Every time I've seen this guy in real life, I'm pretty sure he's just out there to try and hurt someone. He's clearly got ability, but he's not going to play for Manchester United anymore. Facundo Palestri has moved to Union Berlin, a good talented young player but not one that was ever going to get a chance behind Sancho, Anthony and even Ahmad Diallo on that right wing so he's not going to get an opportunity. He's gone to the Bundesliga for 4.1 million. We're also seeing the back of Harry Maguire which wasn't necessarily a transfer that I wanted to make. I was willing to keep him round for another season or at least as a backup player but he wanted out after last year. We were willing to let him go and then let came in he said he'd be upset if he didn't go there so he said you know what go for it 11.25 million is the eventual fee for the Englishman nothing like the 80 mil originally spent on him but we have to take what we can get so Maguire is out the door not only have Varane and Maguire left but also Wamba Saka is one of the starting defenders that we previously had leaving the club another one that I wasn't necessarily looking to ship out just yet but with a year left on his contract he has moved to Al Ittihad out in Saudi Arabia for 30 million 
million pounds. Played a lot last season, wasn't great. I want a more forward thinking right back. So Wambasaka has left us and we have to look toward the future with this club. And for that reason, I've decided to let Casemiro go. Didn't have too long left on his contract. I wanted to play Kobi Mainu and some other players a little bit more than I would have wanted Casemiro to play. To get 44.5 million from Saudi isn't too bad considering 60 was spent on him and he is now 32. The Brazilian has a great career, but it's not going to go on any longer in England. And now we get on to the incomings. We had a huge transfer budget and a huge wage budget, but unlike Manchester United in recent years, I'm not willing to blow that on players that might not work out. Instead, I'm going to try and focus on some more strategic transfers, not spending too much, but slowly improving our squad. That doesn't mean we won't splash out, but it means we are signing a few more players like this one. Albert Grombeck of Bodo Glimt out in Norway for 7.5 million. He's not majorly expensive, nor is he a major talent who's going to kick up a fuss about not playing. Instead, we've got a guy who's just going to be a squad player, but he offers us a nice bit of depth in that midfield, as is the Danishman Morten Frendrup, who's an under-21 international signing for us from Genoa, formerly of Bromby. He did well out in Italy, caught the eyes of our scouts, and we have sent them 18.25 million for the Danish midfielder. He's going to offer us a lot in that box-to-box -box role. Again, just a squad player, not a crazy name or anything like that, but he's a hard worker, and hopefully the United fans will come to love him. We then also spent £20 million on a new striker to deputise Erasmus Hoyland, who I'm not expecting to be the main man scoring all the goals straight away. So we've got Patrick Schicken, the Czech international. He's in as an impact sub, only going to expect to appear off the bench. So if he can score five goals a season for the next few years, I would say he would be worth the value. He's a good physical forward who's got experience to help out Hoyland. I think that could be the perfect mix. I was looking at Sir Hal Grassi of Stuttgart, but he didn't want to join because of the wages I was offering. So you know what? Fair play to him. Instead, Schick is coming in and hopefully he'll ship in with a few goals here and there. Now on to our two new main signings, one of which is Wilfred Singo, who's going to come in hopefully as our best right back to compete with Diego Dallo. He's better going forward than wan -Bissaka. He can also offer himself in that centre-back role, can play quite far forward, is a good tackler, but like I say, has a lot of ability in the attacking phase. Only 23, an Ivorian international, lots of time to improve, signing from Monaco after a great season for 35 million. Also signing from the French division and our most expensive transfer of the summer was Jean-Claire Tadibo of Nice for 40 million quid, rising to 42.5. He was great last season out in France, a phenomenal ball playing defender who at 24 has some years yet before he reaches his prime. He's been linked with United in real life regularly and Nice are owned by Jim Ratcliffe's group Ineos who now own Manchester United. So there's a little link there. I think that's why there's getting so many links in real life. But yes, Tadebo is in as now our best central defender. And our team is now starting to come together as a little bit of our own with Onana in goal, Dallo at right back. That could also be Singo. Tadebo and Martinez playing at the back alongside Luke Shaw. Kobe Mainu was good last year and has improved a hell of a lot. He's alongside Bruno Fernandes and Mason Mount, who might have been written off this year by Manchester United fans. But in game, he's a great player. And I think the number seven has got a bright future still at Manchester United. Sancho comes back from his loan at Dortmund. We're giving him a second chance. He was very good at Dortmund. It was only really Eric Ten Hag that he fell out with at the club. He might not be the perfect player just yet, but he's still only 24. Loads of years left in the tank, and I feel like he could still do a job here at Manchester United. He's alongside Rashford in that starting 11 and Rasmus Hoyland with some great players on the bench, including Garnacho, who is developing very nicely. I feel like the squad is starting to come together. Season preview-wise, we are predicted 7th place, 20 to 1 odds of winning the title, which is obviously less than last season, but we can forgive it. We have basically halved our wage bill here, so if we can have any kind of the same season as we did last year, I would class that as a success. This is going to be a long process, but that process is going to include European football. I thought it was going to be Conference League, but something must have happened. We've now been given Europa League. I assume there was an extra European position given to the Prem, so we'll be heading into the second tier of European football next season. We started to build our own squad now. It's starting to come together, so fingers crossed we can do well in season two. 
And you know what? I think this has been a fantastic year. Yes, the Cups didn't go great and we were knocked out in the round of 16 by Atletico Madrid in the Europa League, but we have managed a fifth place finish, joint on points with Villa and Tottenham, mind you, but it doesn't matter. We won 22 games, 43 goal difference, the third best goal difference in the league, 70 points won, only 14 points off title winners Man City, and it was a much better year considering, like I said earlier, we basically halved the wage bill last season with all of the sales we made. Marcus Rashford was our man of the season, having a great year in the Prem with 18 goals and 12 assists in only 34 appearances, probably his best season yet for United. Mount was also really good last season when he did play. He was a bit injury hit, but when he was on the pitch, three goals and four assists in 13 appearances is a very good return. We also had Hoyland chipping in with 31 goals. Kobe Mainu continues to get better in that defensive midfield role in the absence of Casemiro. Fernandez hit 13, Sancho hit 10, Grombeck hit 5. Five, proving very good value for money. Singo, maybe not so much. Only started five games last season, 42 appearances off the bench. Tadebo, though, was very consistent at the back. And we also saw five goals from Patrick Schick, which was exactly what we asked for him. Alongside that, Garnacho has been improving. Still not quite a guaranteed starter just yet, but he is slowly getting there. And that was a much better season this year round in season two, as we started to make this squad our own. Now, though, we'll be heading into the third season and we'll start to see some major changes to the squad squad now I would have thought with a lot of old contracts expiring and 77 million pounds to spend we're going to bring in some new talent get rid of some deadwood and hopefully keep up this progress as we go slowly and slowly up the league so the season three transfers kicked off with Anthony leaving us on loan to join Atalanta a decent player but he hasn't really played for us in the last couple of seasons we're gonna loan him out with an idea to sell him for the future unless he really does really well at Atalanta but realistically I think we're just trying to raise his value here for an eventual sale and we've also seen homegrown talent Scott McTominay leave the club at the age of 28 he wanted to move on we decided it was for the best 15 million quid to Brentford is a nice bit of extra cash to reinvest in a squad for a player that hasn't played too much for us in recent years forgotten man Tyrrell Malassia has moved to join Al Ali out in Saudi Arabia for a fee of £25 million, which isn't too bad considering United paid £14 million for him. Now 25 years of age, the former youngster has got himself a contract of £500 a week, a good left back, but he wanted to go, so it made sense to move him on and make a bit of cash from him. But the strangest transfer of a lot is probably Wilfred Singo, who joined us last season, looked like he was going to be our starting right back, but did not play much at all. It led to him wanting to leave the club, as you can see, for starts 29 sub appearances thankfully though we've made pretty much all the money back so clearly not every transfer is going to go right in this rebuild but as long as the majority work out we should see progress both on the pitch and hopefully off the pitch financially too coming in this summer is a new left back underneath Luke Shaw as is understudy it's Leif Davis who's been fantastic for Ipswich in the championship this season now though he's joining Manchester United in game he moved to Leicester before moving to us for 27 million the English fullback is a great Great player going forward might not be a world beater but definitely a handy option another good signing in my eyes is Junior Mwanga who joins us from Strasbourg for 30 million quid rising to 32.5 he's been great in Ligue he's now valued at 80 million which shows we've definitely bought a good player here he's a great passer out the back a really good ball playing defender and at 22 he's got years yet to get better so we're just going to let him grow as an understudy Lindelof and also Van der Beek left us this summer on free contract so it has made a bit of space in the squad for someone like Mwanga to pick up some more minutes. McTominay, Eriksson, Van der Beek, none of those are at the club anymore. So for some extra depth in the midfield, we've added Kernan Drewsbury Hall, also of Leicester, as was Leif Davis that we signed earlier. £27 million is the fee for him, rising to 30. A good box-to-box -box player, very akin to Mason Mount attribute-wise. I feel like he'll be a very nice addition just to play here and there. An English 26-year-old in his prime can't really go wrong. But our big mega money transfer of the summer was Jeremy Frimpong. We spent a massive 75 million on the right back from Leverkusen, but one, he's fantastic. Two, he's been playing fantastic. Three, he's got potential. I could keep going, but I feel like this signing is going to work out for us. It seems like the right move. We've got a definite better right back now than Diego Dallo, whereas Singo was a bit more of competition for Dallo. Frimpong blows him out the water. So he is in and he
he's going to walk straight in to our best 11 now, which features some very, very good players. And a lot of it is starting to look like our own team. We've got Onana in goal, Frimpong and Tadebo are ours at the back alongside current players Martinez and Shaw. Mainu continues to improve in that midfield role alongside Fernandez, Mount, Anthony Rashford and Hoyland. With lots of great players on the bench, we're building a much stronger squad with about half the wage bill of what we initially inherited. And if we have a look at the season preview, it's still seventh place. It's still 20 to one odds, but I don't mind that too much. They can keep us as the underdogs. We did well last year. I think we just need to build on that slowly. If not, we might lose our job sooner rather than later. So fingers crossed we can keep pushing up this league and getting some good results for this Manchester United side. And I think our process is definitely going to plan so far. We've got two seasons left to go, but in season three, we have managed to secure a third place league finish, way clear of anyone else below us, and only eight points away from the title winners and five points away from second place Spurs. Champions League, it was a quarterfinal exit to AC Milan. You could argue the fact that we got to the semi-final in season one means we've gone backwards, but I think we just had a good draw that time round. This time, we knocked out Benfica on the way, as well as Arsenal, both on penalties to meet Milan in the quarters, who only beat us by one goal. They then went on to the semi-final and lost to Chelsea, but I think that's been a really good season. FA Cup, Carabao Cup, we can forget about for now, but we have got that third place finish, clearly improving as a squad, clearly doing better and better each year. And that's down to some of these amazing talents on the pitch. Frimpong did exactly what we wanted, comes in and is our best player across the course of the season. Rashford with 16 goals, Hoyland with 35, Mainu continues to improve as one of our best players in the team. Fernandez doing well. Mwanga, also great when called upon, is really good to see. Dallo, Onana, Diallo, Mason Mount, Garnacho, Tadebo, Dewsbury Hall, all of those players playing at a high level. Patrick Ship chipped in with five goals, as well as Jaden Sancho getting five goals for him too. Not as good as last year from Sancho though, so maybe we can review that in the transfer market. A new right wing could definitely improve the team, with Anthony also likely leaving the club. So I feel like this has been another good year of progress. Garnacho chipped in with 10 goals this season and is starting to look like a more regular player in the first team, earning those minutes. And that's because the debts and loans are now down to 500 million. Still a lot of money, but we are slowly getting that down with the amount that we're paying players now being a lot less than what originally was Manchester United's wage bill. So we've definitely had a lot of progress in our three years here. But with two years to go, it's time to really start adding the final pieces to this puzzle and hopefully winning some silverware. But the season four transfer window's up next. We need to buy the right players to make that possible. And it's been another very busy transfer window, selling 150 million quid worth of talent and buying 200 million worth. But before I show you those transfers, this is the last time I'll ask you, but if you want to go ahead and like the video, it really would help me out. And on top of that, if you're interested, there's also a Football Manager Discord linked in the description, a great community of nearly 900 members now of people talking about everything from Football Manager to general football to just general live chat as well, whether it's sharing your save, sharing a wonder kid you've found or asking for tips on the game it's a great community that will help you out so make sure you check that out if it sounds like it's up your street but let's check out the sales first Firstly, Altai Bayandir has left to Saudi Arabia to Al Khalij for 5 million quid. Leif Davis's transfer didn't really work out for us. He's now moved on to join Everton for 7.5 million, his third move in only three seasons. But I know we have made a loss on that, but I think we've made a very good signing at left back, which was the reason that we moved Davis on. So you'll kind of see what I did in a second, but don't worry, the transfer isn't as bad as it seems. Lissandro Martinez has gone to Atletico Madrid in a move that I can actually somehow imagine happening. 30 million pounds is the fee. He's played a little bit less every season, and I think it's now time to move him on. We've not long left on his contract either. Yes, he's 28 and in his prime, but I think we've got some better centre backs, and I've even got some more lined up to hopefully improve the team. And now we get into what I call the money laundering scheme of the video, aka one team from Saudi Arabia, buying pretty much all of the talent that I wanted to move on. Firstly, Anthony has gone to Al Ali for 30 million quid. Loaned out last year to Atalanta, didn't play. Thankfully, the Saudi side have at least given 
some of our money back from that original £80 million investment, so we can move on with that transfer now. Kernan Drewsbury Hall only joined us last year, did well for us, but then as soon as Saudi came in, he wanted to go. It offers us a slight profit on what we paid for him. £40 million quid is the fee. Again, we can reinvest that in the squad, and we've got to take profits when they're offered to us. And that was the case with Bruno Fernandes as well. I know this is a horrible sale for any Manchester United fan. You guys love him as a player, but he's 31 here. Didn't have massively long left on his contract either. Al Ali offered us a pretty big fee of 40 million. For a player of his age, it's not too bad. He hasn't exactly been crucial for us either, despite being really good. And he's only going to get worse as time goes on. This is like four years in the future from real life. So it's not too far fetched to imagine he might leave one day. And I think when you see the replacement, you'll forget you even had Bruno Fernandes ever. But let's start ticking through these incomings because there's a lot to go through. Firstly, Nigerian Igo Ugbu has joined us, 26 year old international from Slavia Prague out in the Czech divisions, 5.75 million. He's better than Lindelof was when he was here, probably very similar to Martinez ability wise, arguably is a little bit better because of those physical attributes. So I think this has worked out perfectly on the transfer front, a bargain of a sign in. As is the 24 year old Austrian Matthias Brunoda, who comes in as a fantastic midfield option, a better player than Dewsbury Hall for a hell of a lot cheaper from Austria Vienna. Our scouts are doing a great job here at Manchester United. If you don't know, I only sign players that our scouts recommend. So as long as they keep recommending gems like this, we'll keep making profit at the club. We also got this centre back. So for the price of Martinez, we bought in him and Ugbu and had money remaining. This is Lorenzo Parola, an Italian 24 year old international left footed ball playing defender. Fantastic option joining us from Salonatana for 18.75 million. The new left back coming in not only to replace Leif Davis, but also displace Luke Shaw as the starting left back is this man, Alexa Terzic, who is a 26 year old Serbian international signing from RB Salzburg for 23 million. Been great out in Austria. Now it's time for him to step up. A fantastic player. Our scouts recommend him highly, as do our coaches. Fingers crossed he'll work out at left back. I mentioned I wanted a new right wing last season. So now that Anthony has left the club, we have bought in Michael Elise, the 24 year old Englishman, comes in as a fantastic player. I say Englishman, he was representing France when I signed him, I'm sure. So no idea what's happened there. Now he's clearly decided, you know what? I'm going to represent England. Either way, we have signed him for £56 million from Crystal Palace, rising to 61. A transfer that's been heavily linked in real life. Hopefully he's going to do the business for us because he did cost quite a lot of money. But speaking of a lot of money, our Bruno Fernandes replacement is none other than Florian Wirtz. After Frimpong worked out so well last season, we have now stolen their other best player, age 23, German international, world-class midfielder, signing for 79 mil as a release clause fee. A fantastic player as a number 10, but for us, we'll be operating as a Mazala on the attack duty in the midfield. I think this is the best transfer we've made so far. If we now have a look at our best 11, we are about to see some massive improvements to what we originally inherited. Onana's in goal with Frimpong, Tadebo, Parola and Luke Shaw. Kobe Mainu, Mason Mount and Florian Wirtz in the midfield with Elise, Rashford and Hoyland. Remember, Hoyland, Rashford, Mainu have all improved over the last few years and become far better players than what you know of them in real life. Mason Mount has been fantastic for us too. We've got a great bench full of lots of great talent now. And with a season preview, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm expecting to see an increase and hopefully better than what was it? Seventh place predicted last time? No, still seventh place predicted, but 15 to one odds is lower than 20 to one, which we've had in recent years. So clearly they're seeing a little bit of progress there. And after that window financially, we're down to 300 million pounds of transfer debt, meaning we are making this club so much more sustainable over the course of the future as we've gone by. I've also asked the club to invest a little bit in some of the facilities as well. I have asked for a new stadium and an expanded stadium. They've said no, but we can forget about that. Our team is ready now. We've got to focus on the pitch for our penultimate season, season four. Can we try and push for a trophy, FA Cup, Carabao, Premier League, Champions League? I'd take anything at this stage so we can at least class this rebuild as a success. And in season four, we were electric, playing great football, winning loads of football matches, and it led to an actual title race where we had a chance to win the trophy. Arsenal were neck and neck with us the whole year from January, and on the final day of the season, after a draw for Arsenal, it meant we were in the ascendancy, and if we beat Luton at home, we will be going home with a Premier League trophy. Now, over the years, we've built a very strong squad mentally at United, and it did mean we got off to a flyer. Mason Mount put the ball in the back of the net. There was no nerve 
nerves in this team. When you've got players like Florian Wurtz doing magic like this, you're not going to have any nerves. After 45 minutes, we were 2-0 up and we were cruising away to a victory to win the title. Luton tried to get back in Volvo, but once again, we won the ball back through Frimpong. He found Terzic on the left-hand side. A nice ball found Hoyland in the middle to make it 3-0 on the day. The Manchester United fans were very close to celebrating a title and we secured it in the 65th minute. Michael Elise bringing the ball down. What a team this is, by the way. Find works. Finds Mount, Mount blasts it in. That's 4 0. That's loot and beat. And that means we have won the Premier League title. This, by the way, is how tight it was this year. Two points difference between us and Arsenal. Michael Elise was the best player in terms of assists in the division, with Florian Wurtz not too far behind. And Rasmus Hoyland was fantastic this year with 24 goals, only one less than Norwegian Erling Haaland on 25. Man City were out of the race this year. Suddenly, I don't really know what happened. They had Jose Mourinho as manager for half of the season maybe that was why it ended up on 69 points they were never really in the title race at all which obviously helped us massively and did lead to us against Arsenal for the battle for the title and we managed to pip it but of course we were in the Champions League this season after a third place finish last year and we actually made it all the way to a Champions League final fresh off of winning the Premier League we weren't short on confidence but in the seventh minute that confidence was taken from us with Dovbik finding the back of the net forcing it past Onana to make it 1-0 and that was all that happened until the 70th minute. We tried to get back in the game. It wouldn't work. Then Brahim Diaz found Ferlin Mendy. He put it across from the left-hand side. And Vinny Jr. scored the goal to make it 2-0 to Real Madrid. They're used to winning these kind of matches. We aren't. But in the 75th minute, we did pull one goal back through Terzic at the back post from a Michael Elise set piece. Now, the game was on and there was a chance for us to get back in it. But in the 90th minute, Vinny Jr. found the ball on the right-hand side. He whipped a cross in, found Dovbik. Dovbik headed it into the goal goal. We ended up losing 3-1, but it was against one of the best sides in the world in the Champions League final. Whilst also winning the Premier League, it wasn't exactly the worst season. On top of that, the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup were still not really going very far in, but it was a very good year for us overall. We've shown that progress. We've won the Premier League, and if that's all we do in this rebuild, I think it's a success, considering how hard the Premier League is, and also how far this club was behind everyone else. It's certainly good progress. We've got Rashford scoring 20 goals, Mount scoring in 10. Frimpong playing great with Elise, Works, and Hoyland as our three best players this season. Terzic doing well too. Kobi Mainu now one of the best players in this squad with 11 caps for England now at only the age of 22. Garnacho fantastic yet again, proving why he's so highly thought of nowadays. And Patrick Schick even chipped in with 11 goals there, so he's doing his part for the club. It was a fantastic season for us. Financially, the balance might not look great right now, but that's because the money hasn't came in for the season. We are slowly lowering down those net debts and that's exactly what we want to do transfer wise we've been given 25 million 300 grand a wage budget we're going to have to make sales again to improve this team but I'm pretty happy with where it is right now I feel like next season we can really push on and try and win that Champions League trophy but we'll try and make some additions to help us out and it's a much quieter window this time around. Free sales, free incomings. The first of the sales was Andre Onana joining Benfica for 11 million quid. He's been okay for us over the years, but never really stand out and was probably the weakest part of our team left. Morton Frendrup definitely served his purpose for us over the last few years. Now though, he's going to Bournemouth to be a squad player. He's only really ever been a squad player for us, but we've made our money back. He contributed well when we asked it of him. So I think that's worked out to be a pretty good sign-in. And Igo Ogbu, after joining last year has now left us he didn't get as much game time as he wanted so he's moved to Saudi for 90 million a massive increase on the six that we paid for him so again works out for both parties a pretty good bit of business especially when we signed Usmane Diamande on a free contract the Ivorian 23 year old was let go by Sporting Club de Portugal by his own will not by the club's will as you can imagine a very talented player who now comes in as a fantastic option in our defense and why wouldn't he want to join the Premier League winners when his contract was up Onana was replaced by Mads Hermansen, who is a Danish goalkeeper, currently playing for Leicester. In this save, he moved to Brighton, did well there, or at least okay. Our scouts recommended him as the best goalie out there. And at 27, being a Danish international, I feel like he suits the squad nicely as he heads towards his prime. They've had Peter Schmeichel before. Maybe Mads Hermansen can be the next Danish superstar in the net for United. And Frendrup's replacement is none other than 10 Cooper Miners, who joins us on a free contract and is clearly a far better player, a fantastic player, considering 
considered world class, 29 years of age, in his prime. You can't ask for much more when trying to improve a title winning team. And this is our final best 11. With pretty much all of the squad overhauled from what we initially inherited, the defence leaves no one remaining. Kobe Mainu works and Mount is an electric midfield with Elise, Rashford and Hoyland up top with plenty of great players on the bench as well. Financially, we've got 300 million quid in the balance, still 100 million pounds in the transfer budget should we want to spend it and the debts and loans have been cleared. We did exactly what we set out to do in our years here at United. Get rid of a lot of the high earners, build a younger squad, compete in the Premier League, help the team financially and now we've got one more year left of this rebuild where we're going to try and give it our best shot to finally win that Champions League. And the ending to this season was absolutely insane. And we start off with the FA Cup, where we actually made a final this year against Leeds United of any club. And Rashford got us off to a flyer in the 34th minute, blasting it home in what would be considered a very, very intense rivalry match for this FA Cup final. Frimpong found Mason Mount on the edge of the area in the 65th, who played it to Rashford and a great curling shot put us 2-0 up to get one hand on the FA Cup trophy. Only a few minutes later, Garnacho found Frimpong, who found one he back heeled it to Garnacho. Garnacho then scored from a tight angle that made it 3-0 on the day and the trophy was pretty much ours. Yes, Leeds did get one goal back for their fans to celebrate late on through Pascal Stroik, but we didn't really care. We won the FA Cup 3-1. Then we get to the Prem where we were once again in a title race and we had to get a result against City and Chelsea on the final two matches of the season. It was 0-0 in the 78th minute. Dedic brought down Wurtz in the box for a pretty weird penalty to be honest for him to get a red card for that felt a little bit harsh I think it was a second yellow but there was one man to step up to get as a result against City remember we didn't just have to win this match we had to also get a result against Chelsea too but Rashford slotted the ball home from the penalty spot that won the game against Man City now we needed a result at Chelsea now Chelsea in this save are a very good team at this point Enzo Fernandez found Sterling in the 43rd minute on the last day of the season at Stamford Bridge he made it 1-0 at that point we were struggling to get back in the game but in the 98 8th minute of all times, Frimpong got the ball on that right wing spot as he always does, played the ball in, Hoyland found the back of the net, that got us a 1-1 draw against Chelsea and that was enough to win us the Premier League title. Then we get onto the Champions League where we faced off against Valencia, Benfica, Real Madrid and PSG, knocking all of them out on the way and that set up a final against Tottenham. And after a boring 0-0 first half, Coop Miners scored a free kick in the 50th minute to really kick the second half off and it did kick off because in the 50th fifth minute Madison scored a penalty that was 1-1 then only a few minutes later the game started going a little crazy Coop Miners found Elise who produced this fantastic dribble to get one of the solo goals of the Champions League history really one of the best you'll see making it 2-1 on the night in the 60th then only a few minutes later Frimpong goes down the right hand side and this is something you're going to see a few times he found Elise Elise pulled it to the edge of the box where former Chelsea player Mason Mount scored against Tottenham to make it 3-1 one. But again, I mentioned Frimpong on that right-hand side, and he did the job yet again. Receiving the ball on the wing, managed to burst past a few players. He then got into a position to play the ball into the box, found Brunader, who tucked it away to make it 4-1 on the night. And it was only a few minutes later, all of these goals, by the way, happened in a 10-minute period, that Frimpong goes down the right yet again. This cross tried to find Rashford. It was cleared away pretty weirdly, found works, back to Rashford. Now it's 5-1, all in the space of a few minutes. Then it started to calm down a little bit. It took another eight minutes for the next goal when Spurs went forward down the left-hand side. Frimpong might be good going forward, but he did cost us a little bit defensively there. Basuma powering it home. That was 5-2, but that was the end of the game. We won the Champions League, and if you've been counting, that's the Champions League, the Premier League, and the FA Cup to win a famous treble for Manchester United. And how could you not win a treble when you've got the likes of Wurtz getting 29 goals, Rashford scoring 26, Hoyland with 35, Coop Miners with 15, Elise with 17, Mount getting goals, Dallo scoring goals, Garnacho scoring goals, Grombeck scoring goals, even Patrick Schick still chipping in with two goals in all competitions. Financially, the club is absolutely thriving. £300 million to spend next summer for anyone that decides to continue this save over on Patreon. We've also improved some of the facilities as well. Five-star reputation, £2 billion estimated value. We have rebuilt Man United. We won an FA Cup. We won a Champions League and two Premier Leagues, all whilst lowering the wage bill and building a new, fresh, young side for the Old Trafford faithful to get behind. So there you go, that's a Manchester United rebuild done. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.